Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer for Wednesday the 12th of May. As we start, let's renew our trust in our wonderful Father as we say together. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. He makes wars to cease, to the ends of the earth. He says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. As so I take a moment to deliberately still yourself and remember and rejoice. God is God. Perhaps breathe in deeply, imagining him filling you with his spirit. And breathe out hassles or stresses into his hands. We pray for God's kingdom to come. Look back at the last 24 hours and give thanks for everything that's been good. Since I've last led these prayers, I've had a, a very good bike ride with some good friends. As it rained, I got on with a practical job repairing a chair um, that was in the end satisfying, or it will be when it's finished. I've had good times with Candy. And work-wise, I've not got done everything I planned to get done, but I've had some very good conversations and some deep conversations. Some very encouraging conversations. Thank you. So we pray for God's healing and God's way forward for anything that's made you sad. If you could particularly pray for my friend Mary. and uh, the family of her brother Martin on his sad and unexpected death. For others that uh, you won't know, but um, Ralph and Julie Continue to pray for Marion and Edna, Pat, Bernard, Marie, for others on our hearts this day, for all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we also uh, give you thanks for uh, the vaccine in this country, for the way numbers have been going down. Father, we pray for your protection uh, as the restrictions uh, decrease, and yet so many are still are not vaccinated. We pray for your protection 
But as we pray for ourselves, so we pray for so many other countries, especially India and Pakistan and Brazil and the countries of South America. Lord, for your protection for the vaccine to go to all, not just the rich. For your blessing for all who care in so many different ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And both, uh, well, for our local churches and actually for our country. Um, we are moving from a phase of where we've been reacting and responding to the pandemic to a time of recovery. Beginning to open our churches and, and do more. And perhaps do things differently as we learn. Let's just pray for that period of recovery and reconstruction, for wisdom for all leaders in our churches, in our government, for our local councillors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we cry out to you again, for Israel. Lord, for the violence that's erupting again there. For the injustice that goes back in cycles of violence. Or for centuries, with Jews and Palestinians being victims in different ways. Our Father, we cry out to you for healing, for peace, especially for protection for the most vulnerable and weak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To consider the day ahead of you, what you're looking forward to and what worries you. I'd love your prayers for our St John's DCC um, and connected with that for the diocese and its vision, for plans for reordering. I'd love your prayers just that I get some of the uh, kind of admin and planning jobs done that I need to do for whatever awaits you as well. Let us offer to God what we can and trust him to provide what we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to the uh, last of our readings for the time being on uh, Mark's Gospel. Um, we were filling in before Easter. Uh, we we took Jesus kind of on the road to Jerusalem, following on from Peter's declaration that he was the Messiah and Jesus's declaration that he was about to die. So today we finish the story up to there. Um, tomorrow it's Ascension Day and we are joining in with uh, the church nationwide, praying for God's kingdom to come. So. Um, Things will be slightly different, but do join in again in the prayers. So Jesus and the disciples came to Bethsaida. And some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spat on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, 
I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. I don't know what strikes you uh, about this reading, but two or three things strike me. Firstly, I just love the way that uh, Jesus had to kind of persevere in prayer. As he prayed first, the man was partially healed, but couldn't see properly. And he had to pray again. So if Jesus has to, how much more us do we persevere? The second uh, interesting thing is we've had a, a series of readings demonstrating Jesus's power. And at the end of it, Jesus asks the disciples, who do people say I am? Who do you say I am? And the purpose of the miracles was partly just acts of love and grace, but also to begin to open the eyes so that people could really see, not the distorted picture, but really see who Jesus was. But so often they couldn't. The warning to the blind man not to go into the village was because Jesus didn't want just a bunch of miracle seeking followers. Peter at least got part of the answer right. Jesus was the Messiah, though of course he was so much more. Question for us today, who do you say Jesus is? What is he to you? Maybe just take a moment to think of words or phrases that describe Jesus and give thanks for them and treasure them. For me today, I, I just feel so thankful that Jesus is our shepherd, for his protection, for his guidance when we don't know where we're going. I love the way he provides with the five loaves and two fish. And I love what I perceive as Jesus's sense of humour behind it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. we pray together. Christ, light of the world, scatter our darkness. Let your healing spring up with the dawn. In the darkness around us, let us as your church be a still place of light, a still place of love, a still place of peace, a still place of your presence. Through us, let your light shine, let your love enfold, let your peace fill. Let your presence be known. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever.
And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and all those you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for uh, praying with me uh, and for me. Bless you. Bye-bye.